Hello, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over the fourth video actually in a series that if you want to follow along, I'll link to the first few videos we did all about calculating quartiles and percentiles. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this scatter chart. So you'll see at the bottom, it's broken out into 25% increments. That's for each part of the quartile, quartiles one through four. So that's your X axis. And then the Y up here is we're looking at the performance rating. So with this example, they could have a performance rating between on a scale between one and 10. And so each dot is a specific employee's position in their range or the percent rank, which we went over though how to calculate and find those formulas in a previous video, which I'll link to, but it's basically their percentile. So if they were at 50th percentile, that would be right here. That'd actually be in quartile two. So each dot is falling within the percentages within their quartile. So we're going to be going over how to set that up and how to set these, these lines we have set up is more to show if the performance rating is seven and above. Are there specific trends for this group? We're kind of breaking the performance rating groups out into three. If they're below a three, the low performance group or somewhere in the middle, just to see, are there any trends to the performance rating and where they fall within their salary range? Okay, so let me start fresh with this list of data we have. And to add the scatter graph, I'm just going to highlight everything, come to, you could either come up top to the insert, click on the scatter. Sometimes the recommended charts will have it, but this one is not recommending, probably because we have so many columns of data and we're really only using a couple columns for this. Okay, so you can select the XY scatter and then we will, you'll see it just automatically picks some data that's not looking how we want it to look off the bat. So we need to make some adjustments to this. Just right click on it and go to select data and we're just going to remove this and then we're going to add our own. So series name could be, it's really just the label. It might show up as the chart name at first. So that doesn't really make a huge difference, but I'm just going to select the header. And then we want the X values to be the percentage, their percentile or percentage and range. So we can have the different quartiles breakouts. And then the Y is going to be performance rating. Okay, and then now it's looking a little bit closer to what we wanted, but you'll see we it's breaking it out evenly to 120%. We're only just putting everybody at 100% would be the max of the range. So we're just setting everybody to 100% for this example that's at or above the max. So to adjust this bottom x-axis, just go to format, uh, right click, and then format axis. And after that, you'll see it defaulted the max value to 1.2. That's for 120%. So we'll just change that to 1.0 and that should change it to 100% max. And then the major units, we want it to be the quartiles. So we want 0.25 as the major. And I'm going to do one more change. I don't want that decimal in the percentage at the bottom, even though we had that. It populated because we had it in the, the data column, but you can change it here if you just change where it says number and then decimal places to zero. And then let me X out. And then so that bottom part is looking better. Now with the Y axis 0 to 12, this is a performance rating that can only go up to 10. So it's really it's from 1 to 10. We don't have anybody at 0. So I'm going to change just right click and format axis on the Y axis. And I'm going to change it to 1 to 10. And then that's looking better. And then next we will 
try to select these the grid lines going across and right click format grid lines we don't want the line on every number so I'm just gonna take that out okay so the next part can get a little bit tricky and this is where we want to add the orange line that's going across and we just want it on two places we want to break up the ratings basically we're breaking up the ratings into three sections so eight and above high performers four and below below expectations and then you know between four and eight is average or on target so to do that we need to add some information in i'm just going to copy and paste what i had for this this little chart to the right that we're going to reference in the chart but we need to fill it out first and i'm going to change this instead of labeling this x axis let's call it let's call this pr for performance rating 8 and this is going to be for performance rating four. So that way I can tell, okay, this is where I want the line for performance rating eight. So if I want a line to come across here, I need to identify the X axis values for the line. It's going to be zero to a hundred percent. So just the full, we want a full line across. So I need to start with 0% and then 100% and then for Y we are just going to list the value where we want the line. So we want it at 8 for this one so I'm just going to put 8 and then same with this other section for performance rating 4. We want the line all the way across so it's going to be whatever values you have on your X axis, we want it from zero to 100%. And then Y, I want it on, I want that line at four, the performance rating four, so I'm just gonna enter four. So that's how you can go about determining where you want your lines to show. So once I have that filled out, I'm gonna right click and come back to select data and add and then I'm going to click on the label, what I had put there, PR for performance rating 8. And then the X values, I'm just going to highlight the two I had placed in that chart. And then the Y values, I'm going to highlight the two I placed in that chart as well. Click OK. And then now you'll see I have two orange dots. This is good, but we want a line going across it. So let me select a dot and then right click and then go to format data point. Don't do anything with this first one. We need to click on this little hat line. Then we have the line option. So we're going to select solid line. We want it to be orange. You can of course change the what it looks like if you want it a thicker width. This should be good though. Oh, where'd my line go? It didn't actually add it. Line, solid line, and then X out. So then we have our first line, and then we'll do the same thing to add the line for performance rating four. I'm just gonna right click, select data, add a new series, PR four for performance rating four. Then I just highlight my X values and then my Y values and click OK. Now that one added a gray color here. Go to Format Data Series and click on this hat and select Solid Line. And that looks good. I want it to match the orange, so they're both orange. So that gives us our three sections. Now they're not completely even. If we wanted to change this line, top line to go to seven, I can just update it here and it will link. So maybe we could make those type of adjustments. It's just linked over here. And one other thing, these lines are appeared automatically, these grid lines for the percentiles, but maybe I want to make those a little bit darker. They appeared automatic because we only have 
four lines for this, but if you had more data points and you wanted to add those lines, we would follow a similar process with telling it where to put the X and the Y. So for this one, I want to make it solid line and I want it blue and I want it a little bit thicker. So you can adjust it right there. Now we have more quadrants and sections to look at. So that's more of a matrix format to review the core tiles. And from there, I just added these text boxes to the bottom. So you could paste in something like that. And to add the chart title back, you see it took the chart title away once we started adding more data sources. We can add a chart title back. Just go to the top where it says chart design, add chart element, and not data labels, chart title. There we go. So we can add it like that. I think it looks better this way. And then we can add our chart title. So quartiles by performance, performance rating. And then we have the scatter graph. Now, one thing to think about with the scatter graph, this type of data where each person has a, a unique percentage here works best because if we had tried to use it on the quartile, say there were 10 people at quartile one and we were just trying to use this instead, it would show all 10 people is one dot. So for example, if there's 10 people that have 20 are at the 20th percentile and have 20% in this column, it would still just show one dot right here. And there probably is, see there's already two 20% in the data set. So that's kind of a kind of a limitation or something to think about if you want to use this scatter, it kind of needs to be unique values that you're scattering on the chart versus last week's video where we did, we also used core tiles but we looked at we looked at the count, how many employees in quartile two, and then we used different colors to find which grade were they in. So that was another thing to think about if you just want to do headcount by quartile, or do you want to show the detail on all the different variations within the quartiles, then you would use the scatter graph. And I will link to a page that has all the different videos on this. I think there were four total going over quartiles, percentiles, and then we had um, we had this bar chart by quartile and grade, and then we have scar scatter charts. So I'm going to add that all to one page at the Time Saving Templates website. That way you can look through all of them together. Also wanted to point out, we do have some free resources you can find at timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources. We have a compensation metrics cheat sheet as well as a few other things and a free guide to get started with Excel. So feel free to check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, don't forget, I'm here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using Excel spreadsheets, and I will see you next time.